least we're starting. Okay, go from current slide. Okay. All right, before we get going today, just a couple of issues, not major ones. Um, Friday was a good day on, uh, did it just mess up again? What's that? Oh, there it is. That's what we want. Okay, uh, Friday was a pretty good day in the office over there. There was nobody else there but me, so I was able to get quite a bit of grading. But I had some other administrative things to take care of as well. And people did come by, but no one else was, neither of the other people who were normally in the office were there. So things were quieter, and uh, so I did get quite a bit of grading completed. Um, and then over the weekend, I had little bits and places here and there that I could do grading. But then on uh, Veterans Day, or the observance on Monday when we didn't have school, um, I got some errands I had to run in the morning and into the early afternoon. But then in the late afternoon, or mid-afternoon, it was raining so bad, nothing else, no other task ahead of me. So I got a lot of grading done until my red ink pen ran <laughs> out, and I could not find the red ink pen at home. So uh, I said, let me put grades in Blackboard. So I got those caught up. Now, not things that I've done this week, but up until Sunday or Monday afternoon. Uh, I've graded a few more papers since then. No, no one who's here, but uh, some that were turned in last Wednesday that I didn't have graded before. So anyway, Blackboard is almost up to date, except for the last two things, <laughs> I think, pages, papers. Um, now, Next issue, I think I've told you before, you know, it's one of these good news, bad news situations. Uh, good news is that next week is Thanksgiving week. So state holiday, Thursday and Friday, school will be closed completely. Okay. Um, get. Is it Megan? Yeah. All right. Uh, Thursday and Friday, state holiday, school is closed completely. No one in any offices anywhere, anytime, anyhow. Okay. But, I don't know what it's doing. But, the uh, on the other hand, we have professional meetings Monday, well, actually, the state... Alabama Community College system has its system-wide meetings down in Mobile this time, which means I'm not going, uh, and that's uh, Sunday evening, Monday, and Tuesday, okay? Uh, certainly, and as I said, I'm not going, but for those of us not going to that meeting, there are uh, local meetings that we're having Monday, Tuesday, and I hope they're going to give us Wednesday as a day to work in our offices, okay? So that, but it means no classes at all next week. None. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, certainly not Thursday and Friday. However, the college offices will be open Monday and Tuesday as normal, except pretty much reduced staff because some people may be down at the meeting, some people may be taking uh, vacation days or, or whatever, uh, personal days, uh, whatever they need to. So, uh, but all offices are open. So if you do have business in an office, try to be there Monday or Tuesday, okay? Or Wednesday morning. Now, the reason I say that is, Ashley's here, is that um, traditionally, though not guaranteed and not required, they usually give people Wednesday afternoon off, okay? since it's the day before a major holiday and a lot of people may be cooking really busily into the night, they tend to try to give people a little bit of time off on Wednesday afternoon, though it's not guaranteed. Neither is it known not only if they're going to give us time off, or, but when. So if they don't give us any, it'll be a full working day. If they do, usually it's 
1 to 2 o'clock, they usually say you can go. So the point being, if you have business with the college, all day Monday the offices will be open, all day Tuesday the offices will be open, and I know that Wednesday morning the offices will be open. What I don't know is if they're going to be open much into the afternoon. So if you got business to do, get it taken care of anytime Monday, anytime Tuesday, or Wednesday morning, because then people will be there and you can uh, count on getting service. Anytime Wednesday afternoon, don't count on your fingers, because even if they don't give us time off, some people may take personal leave or something like that and be gone uh Wednesday afternoon, so don't count up. I'll be on campus Monday and Tuesday, but Monday and Tuesday, like I said, we'll have professional meetings over on the east, uh, west campus. I won't be in my office in Birmingham, on Bessemer, okay? Wednesday, I hope that they give us office time, so I should be back on Bessemer unless there's something I need to do on Birmingham west campus because I have an office there, but it just doesn't have all of my stuff in it. Uh, but I will, I can be there if, if the need calls for it. So call first if you're trying to catch me. Monday and Tuesday, I'm, you know, going to be in meetings and calling won't do me any good. But Wednesday, at least until sometime in the mid-afternoon, call first if you do need to see me, and I'll let you know where I am. Both of the numbers are on my syllabus, uh, so call. Don't bother leaving messages because... My voicemail doesn't work consistently on Bessemer campus, and the one that you'll get on Birmingham is not mine. I can't access it, so don't leave a message there. All right, any questions? Okay. We're in 17.5, which is Ohm's Law, and we just got started in this last time, and I think we were down to the blue box uh, on page 465, Okay. And here are a few of the ways to represent Ohm's Law. Okay, let me get my pen. I can't get the box to cut. There it goes. Okay, if I can't get my boxes to show up. There we go. Okay. All right. Let me get my pen to black. Okay, now I think we're ready to go. Here's one expression of Ohm's Law. I is equal to V over R. Now, what does I stand for? Say that again. Okay, current is I. V is voltage drop across the resistor, or voltage increase across a battery or source, and R is resistance. So this is current which is in amps, okay, this is voltage, in volts, so not only the parameter is capital V, the unit is capital V, and this is resistance, and that would be in, anyone remember the units? For resistance, named after Georg, Ohm, and the symbol is not O, but Omega, a Greek symbol Omega. I don't know why this is flashing on and off. I'm not moving, I'm not touching it, not doing anything to it, but it just seems to be flashing on and off, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's the cord, I don't know if it's my computer. Should I see if I can find another cord? Because this, this one did have sort of a kink in it. I don't know if my moving the cord is doing it, but I can't seem to get anything now. So sorry about this, folks. Let me see if I can get another cord.
found another one down there. I don't know if it's any better or worse. Let's give it a shot. I'm sorry about this. I swear this seems like this eats up so much time. Every week. Just about every week. Try it again. Hmm. It did flash up there, didn't it? Yep. Now will it continue up there? Ah! Did we have a signal before? Or was it that? Well, before it had that little square that said input. Yeah. It was pretty far gone. Did it have that? It went just like before this? I didn't see it. Okay. I'm going to try to turn this off. The trouble is, I have to let the fan cool it off first before I can try to turn it back on again. But I'm having the feeling this board is worse than the other one. <coughs> I need to find Just got the cord. The, uh, I was coming down the hall. I saw the door was still ajar. They were still in the office. Came in here, hooked it up. When this one didn't work, went back to check. They were. They, they all, used to. They just, I just passed. They just passed. Yeah. Yeah. They always leave before five. Yeah. And they used to leave it open for us to get to it at night. And now they started locking it. So, I don't know why. Okay, that's what we had before. Okay. No circuit. We're having connection problems again. I have two cords, and one of them works sporadically, and the other doesn't work at all. I don't know. It may be this projector because, you know, it does warble, you know, and, and vibrate a lot. My other projectors, I pick up the other campus, which usually has worse equipment than they do here. Uh, it's really good and steady. So I wonder if that projector has some sensitivity issues.
this one did work sporadically. The other one doesn't seem to work at all. There, we got it. Knock on wood for a moment. Okay, now let me get those that just came in. All right, Jennifer Addison is here. Okay, in the back. Okay, uh, Cora is here. And did anyone else come in? Two, four, six. Two, four, six. Okay. And as I was telling the others, uh, I did get all the grades in Blackboard, except just a couple that I've graded today and maybe yesterday. But all of you already had your work in. And then uh, also to remind you, next week, no class. Uh, there are professional meetings. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Wednesday is a duty day for us, and then Thursday and Friday is a holiday, so or holidays. So there is no class next Wednesday. Okay, so don't come. <laughs> okay, so that's one form of Ohm's law. Can anyone tell me one of the other two forms in which we could express Ohm's law? Anybody? This is sort of like our little triangle and circle type deal. What are the two other forms? That's the one we got up there. Oh, sorry. Okay. R equals um, B divided by I. Okay. Got it. If I can get my pen back. There we go. Uh, R is equal to V divided by I. Same symbols as before. One more. V is equal to IR. Okay. Voltage is current times resistance. Resistance is voltage divided by current. R current is voltage divided by resistance. Okay. Three different forms we could use. Uh... Um, okay, let me first get, uh, Nicole, is that right? Okay, uh, yeah, okay, let's get what we're talking about. We're talking about circuits, okay? You've got things happening plugged into the wall and providing, you know, electrical. The voltage is the power supply, the thing that gives the current, the charges the energy, okay? That's boosting it up. The, the battery, the plug, whatever it is, you're giving it voltage. Current is the movement of charge, okay? It's charge is coulombs, but current is charge per unit time, so it's the time rate of change of charge, which is current, the movement of charge, okay? So that's your current. Then your resistance is the, res the tendency that tries to impede that. That would be your load, like the heater that produces, takes electrical energy away from the charges and produces heat energy, produces light, produces sound, produces whatever, okay? That is the load. That always has resistance associated with it. Now, even a conducting wire has a little bit of resistance, but not a lot. We usually tend to ignore that. It's usually the load that is uh, providing the most of the resistance. That would be the light bulb, the, the uh, amplifier, the computer, the television set, the oven, the dryer, dryer, the clothes washer, whatever you happen to be using, that is the thing that's using the energy that is resisting the energy flow, the current flow, using the energy from those coulombs and charges and sending them on their way. 
Okay. That make any sense? Okay. A little bit. Okay. Now, in terms of units, like I just said, uh, you can express these. Now, I don't like the way they did it, but you could do it this way. This would be in, in units, so many ohms is equal to so many volts divided by so many amps. Okay? Or you can rearrange all those uh, in terms of units. I don't like that because always for these units, you have a number in front of them. These are units. They're not parameters. These are your parameters. There you don't need num uh, numbers in front. In fact, they don't make sense. Now, on the, uh, do any, well, I don't know what they're getting here. All right, we won't mess with the string of lights. Try this activity. You can if you want to read it. It's on page 480, 466. Sorry, I can't read. All right, let's do example one. Okay, I'm going to clear this off the screen so I have room to write. A heating element on an electric range operating on a 240 volt circuit. 240 volts. What do you reckon that represents? Voltage. Voltage, exactly. Volts, volts, the same parameter as you use for the unit. That's a very, very few uh, examples like that. Now, it's interesting that here, okay, I should have brought it back on the other slide. Sometimes to keep from being confusing like that, they'll use a capital E rather than V. Okay? Now, I don't like the use of that because in other cases, E stands for energy. And energy and voltage is not quite the same thing. They're related. Voltage is energy per charge, but it's not energy. So you'll see it in the book. In fact, they did it in the blue box. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I is equal to V over R, or it can be written as I is equal to E over R, where E is the, and what they call it there is EMF, which is not a very good term either. They don't ever tell you what EMF stands for. It used to stand for electromotive force. But you see, it's not a force either, okay? In fact, it's further from being a force than it is energy. But that's what they used to call it, and that's why they sometimes use the symbol E, okay? Uh... And it says the source of electrical energy, but it's a source of electrical energy per charge. So it's not just an energy term either. Okay. So here they said E is equal to 240 volts, whichever. Okay. Uh, has a resistance of 30.0 ohms. And what would that be then? That's your R. Resistant, oops, I forgot my unit, ohms, okay. It says, what current does it draw? So we're looking for I. What current? That's going to answer your question. Can you think of a formula that relates current, voltage, and resistance? Okay, okay. I'll put it like they do, E over R. But remembering that stands for voltage. So what would that be? 240 volts divided by 30.0 ohms. <coughs> okay, they didn't say if that zero is significant or not on the volts. The idea of it is three digits on the ohms. What does this do? Okay. Now that zero is doing nothing for us. These you can divide out. Three will go into 24. Eight. And what unit for current? Amps. Now I would put at least one zero. You could arguably put two. I imagine they leave it as just one. Okay. Okay, an amp is a volts per ohm. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and I know the book said that an ohm is a derived unit. What does that mean? Uh, it means it's not a fundamental unit of nature. Uh, it's one that you derive from other units. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, 
Let's settle for resistance is equal to voltage over uh, current, right? Now, voltage, like we said, was energy per charge, which would be a joule per coulomb divided by an amp. Now, believe it or not, they count an amp as a fundamental unit. So it's not a derived unit. So amp is fine. But what is a joule? A joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Remember that? Divided by, uh, okay, by coulomb. Yeah. What a coulomb is, is an amp second. Okay, because an amp, one amp is equal to one coulomb per second. Okay, so therefore a coulomb is an amp second. So you could change this to be an amp second. Okay, this is sort of bizarre, but it is true. So a, an ohm is a kilogram, okay, let me write it here, is a kilogram meter squared per second squared per second cubed over amp squared. You ask what it was in fundamental unit? There it is. A kilogram meter squared per second cubed over amp squared, which you could say, yuck, was kilogram, kilogram, meter squared over amp squared second squared. Okay. That's the basic units. Those are all basic units. Ohm's much simpler. Believe me, ohms is much simpler. I would never suggest trying to remember an ohm in those terms. Just not worth it. Okay. But we did get our 8.0 amps, which is a fundamental unit amp. Okay. Any questions on that? That's what they mean. It's a derived unit. It's derived from your other. Remember, there were seven basic units. Mass, kilograms, distance, meters, time, seconds, temperature, Kelvin, uh, current, and amps. Uh, light intensity, brightness type thing, candela. I don't remember the last one. What was it? Yeah. Oh, chemical quantity is a mole. Okay. So we're not going to do anything with moles, so don't worry about those. Okay. We're not going to do anything with candela. Don't worry about those. Don't worry about any of them, but we probably aren't going to do anything with temperatures, so don't worry about Kelvin. Okay. Ready for example two? Yay or nay? Okay, let's go to example two. All right. A flashlight bulb is connected to two dry cell batteries. When they say dry cells, they mean batteries. With an equivalent voltage of 3.0 volts. So there's our, let's call it E to match theirs, is equal to 3.0 volts. Okay? If it draws 15 milliamps, what's that a measure of? That's your current. Okay? But we usually don't deal in milliamps in our formula. We need it in amps. So what is a milliamp? Okay, it's a smaller, it's a small unit, so the number of amps you would move the decimal, yeah, to the negative three, so you would move it three places to the left, you only have two, so put another zero there, that would be zero point, I like to put a zero in front too, zero one five amps, because we do our calculations in amps, okay? What is the resistance? So we're looking for R. And what formula will give that to us? Divided 
e divided by i, where here our e is 3.0 volts and our i is 0 0.015 amps. Okay. It's going to be an incredibly large resistance. What will it be? Well, let's move this decimal three places that way again. Move this one three places here. 15 will go in the 30. How many times? Let me clean up my act here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. I put the zeros here so I could divide without pulling out a calculator. You can use a calculator, that's okay. But 15 will go into 30 twice, and then you have another zero before your decimal place. So it's 20, what units? Ohms. Ohms, ohms. okay. 20 ohms, okay. Two significant digits, that zero is significant. Oh, wait, I missed it. 200 ohms. Okay. How did I mess that, mess that up? Three decimals. Oh, I only moved it two decimals. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Two more zeros. 15 will go in the 30 twice, and then you got two more zeros after that. 200 ohms. Okay. I thought it was a lot bigger number than that. 200 ohms. Now, they say only the first zero is significant. You don't have to do that. But the reason is two significant digits there, two significant digits there. So uh, only the two zero. But it's 200. But only the middle zero is significant. Make sense? All right. Now, they talk a little bit of electric shock. Uh, that's a pretty important issue. Do you think? Your dealings with the equipment and stuff is something that this will be an issue with you. I think generally that will be safety learned on the spot. So I, but if you want to, uh, to talk about that, I'll be glad to uh, move along on that as well. Anyone need that discussed? Okay, if not, we'll do. That finishes 17.6. The title of 17.6 was Ohm's Law. Quite a few problems there. Any of the odds, 1 through 15. I go on to the next page. Do some of each type of those to make sure you've got it down. Okay, we move from there, if there's no questions on Ohm's Law, move from there to series circuits. Okay, now... Goodness, this thing hides well, doesn't it? All right, here we go. This is a diagram of what we call a series circuit. Let me describe to you what we mean by that. Okay, now this is showing your power supply, your, your voltage source as being a battery, which is fine. And you, I can't tell looking at it which of those is my plus side and which is my minus side. According to this, this must be the plus side and that the minus because of the diagram there. It really doesn't matter, okay? But what we have is the current coming from the battery. That's where the battery gives those charges the energy, okay? So it's coming from there. This looks like a 9-volt battery. Goes through your light, which is your load comes out of the light through the switch. If that switch is open, light is off because you have to have current moving. Current has to have a complete circuit. So if the switch is open, no light comes on. Of course, we're used to that. If you close the switch, now that it has a pathway that's completed, the light comes on. Okay? That is called a series circuit because the same charge leaves the battery, goes through the bulb, goes through the switch, and back to the battery. Everything has one pathway. The current has one and only one pathway. That is indicative of a uh, series circuit. Now, if you put another light bulb in here on the same 
basically wire, only this that goes here to another light bulb here, back to the switch, then those are in series. Those light bulbs are, you would note that by a load here and another load there, or here or here. You can put them anywhere you want to. That would be a series circuit because it's one current that goes through them all. Now notice how they're listing the current now. Earlier they were doing it a little strangely, but we always assume that the current is going from high potential to low potential because everything in physics goes from high to low. What we talked about before was because these are electrons that are doing most of the movement here, they are negatively charged, so they go from negative to positive. But don't worry about that. We'll always assume the current is going from positive to negative. It's the direction a positive charge would go if positive charges went. Okay. So that's our illustration. Let's see if they have another one. Okay. No, they don't. This is pages away before they hit that one. So let's go back to our board and go from that slide. Okay. Now, just a little bit, they, they showed the diagram on the other a little bit. Here's symbolically what they have. Okay. Now, this time they turned the battery the other way. It doesn't really matter which way you turn it. Let me get my pen back. Um, okay. I'm going to do it the way we had it before. This represents a battery. You may have more than one pairs of lines like that, but basically they represent plates in the battery. Okay? Now, plates aren't always parallel like that. In a circular battery, certainly they wouldn't be. They would be concentric circles. Okay? But we represent them this way. I think this comes from the storage batteries in your car. You've seen those big boxes in your car? If you've ever looked into those, you'll see they're alternating plates. And every pair of plates is about 2 volts, and there's usually uh, 6 pairs, so that's a 12-volt battery. Okay? In your 9-volt battery that you have here, that you had in the last thing, there were multiple uh, plates in there. They usually represent it by one or two parallel plates. The long line is always the positive side. The short line is the negative side. And we will assume that the current flows in the positive direction, okay, from positive to negative. Here we have the load. Before, they drew a picture of something in that the load. A squiggly line is the load, okay? The switch is, looks a lot like a switch, okay? and it comes back to the battery, okay? So the switch open or switch closed, okay? Those are the symbols we usually use. If we get to anything else, I'll give you the newer symbols. I don't think we'll get to there this term, but we'll see, okay? Now, I'm going to represent a, another form of a series circuit, okay? And here it would be. This time they're putting the battery down here, and they actually put two sets. It doesn't matter, okay? And they call this E, electromotive force, which is not really a force, but that's what they call it. The current leaving from the positive side, so the current is I. Okay, this is the plus side, that's the minus side. Okay, now here we have it going through one resistor, another resistor, and another resistor. Okay, and they're not showing a switch here, which is perfectly fine. You don't have to have a switch in the circuit. This one you just connect and it's running. Now, they'll call, they named this resistance one. They named this resistance two and this resistance three. They don't have to be the same resistances. They could be different things. One could be a toaster oven, one could be a, a, a light bulb, and one could be a hair dryer. I mean, whatever they are, if they're all on the same circuit, that's what they are. You would never do that with those three appliances, but you could. All right. Now, they show the current leaving the uh, battery there as just I. And then for some reason, they show a current here as I1, 
That's the current that went through resistor 1. And here they show a current I2 that went through resistance 2. And then they show a current here, I3, that made it through resistance 3. Okay? They also show a voltage here. It's called the voltage drop across the first resistor, another voltage drop across the second resistor, and another voltage drop across the third resistor. Okay? Now, these are not part of a circuit. Maybe I should indicate this by a different color. What color would you like the, those to be? Pick a color. Green. Okay, let's just pick green. So let's make these green. And this is just showing they, they are a voltage drop. This isn't part of the circuit. Okay, just like these arrows up here for currents. They're not part of the circuit. They're in the circuit, but they're not part. Those are just indicating that's where the current is heading. Okay. Oh, and I didn't do this one. Okay. Those are just voltage drops. Now, do you think that resistor 1 uses some of the current that came in and less current leaves? Is I2, is I1 greater than, less than, or equal to I? Second? Okay. That would be a common thought, but guess what? You don't use up current. Current is charges. Charges are neither created nor destroyed. So there's nowhere for them to go there. It's the same current here as here as here and as there. Same current all the way through. In a series circuit, the current is always the same. The energy of those charges, that's what she's used. That's what your resistors use. That's what the loads use. The energy of the current of the char per charge, but not the charges themselves. Okay? The current is the same. So I is equal to I is equal to I is equal to I. All three of those I's are the same. So when you say energy, does that refer to voltage? That's your voltage drop. This voltage yes. drop is a part of this source. This is another part, and here's another part. So the voltage drops. Let's just give me a, a, a figure for this one. Make up one. How many volts? Make up a number. 50. 50. Okay, we've got 50 volts here. Okay, make up a number for the voltage drop across resistor 1. Anything will do. 10. 10. Okay. This will be 10 volt drop there, that one, R2, make up something, 15, 15 volts there. Then I will tell you, across voltage 3, you have to have a voltage, uh, resistor 3, you have to have a voltage drop of 25. Why? Because around the circuit, this is a Plus, as it goes from here to here, the battery is giving energy to those charges. Here it's dropping in voltage as it goes there, dropping as it goes there, dropping as it goes there, and it must come back in with 50 volts having dropped because you added 50 here. The voltage adds in a series circuit. The current stays the same. Okay? And because of that, your resistances effectively add. You could replace this current here, let me go back to black here, with one current, uh, forget all this, and put one big resistor there and call this R, I'm going to call it RE for effective resistance of all those. And guess what? That RE is going to be the sum of R1 plus R2 plus R3. That is your effective resistance because you're adding those voltages and the voltages uh, add. The current stays the same. So the R1 would be V1 over I. R2 would be V2 over I. And R3 would be V3 over I. The three voltages add to be E, 
V1 plus V2 plus V3. Actually, they add to be the opposite of E. If these are, if that's a plus 50, these are actually minus. The, you're, you're dropping, dropping, dropping. It's because you go back to zero at the end. Okay? Uh, so it's E is equal to actually the minus the sum of all those. Okay? Your resistance is add. RE, the effective resistance, is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. Oh, huh, that came out of B3. Okay, R3. Let me see if I can clean that up a little bit. Oh, it didn't. Okay. So that's true about series circuits. Okay. Now, In your text, especially on page 469, they have these green boxes. In the first green box, they say this. It's what I just said. I is equal to I1 is equal to I2 is equal to I3. Those are all the same current. So you don't even need the subscript. That's just I. Okay? In your series circuit, the currents, I mean the voltages, now... They don't mess around with the signs, so they just count this as a plus, okay? Um, in reality, one's up and the others are down, but we'll just forget that for now, and those voltages add up, okay? V1 plus V2 plus V3. That's your total voltage, E, okay? And in your series, they don't call it R sub E. They call it just R, which I find a little bizarre, R. They call it R, just R. The effective or the total resistance is the sum of the resistances. The effect or the total current is the same throughout. It doesn't change, it doesn't add. And the voltages add, okay? Especially if you're dealing with absolute values. Now what the, I call the R sub E, they're calling equivalent <laughs> resistance, but they... Uh, that would be, if you took one big resistor out and put in there, it would have the same effect as those three small ones, as long as the big resistor is the sum of those three small ones. Okay? Questions? Okay. Now, I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember the old Christmas tree lights. You know the ones I'm talking about? That if one bulb went out, the whole strand was out. That was a series circuit. Because guess what? If something breaks here in this resistor, it opens a circuit just like a switch would do. And that's why the whole string went out. And I can remember my dad. We had the bubble lights, and they were, uh, they were series. And when one went out, he had to go through, get new ones, and then try the first one and then try the next one and, try, you know, and just do all the way down the line until they came back on and he knew the last one he took out was bad, so he threw it away. If two went out at the same time, oh, my word, then he had to do it twice, okay? Uh, but you had to be careful because you didn't know if that last one you took out was the good or, one of the good or bad ones. If it was a bad one, then you were testing the all string with another bad light. It was awful, but those were series circuits. Most of the things in your home are not series. They're parallel. Because if you turn the TV off, the lights don't go off. If you switch the lights on, the TV doesn't automatically come on. You know, uh, everything's like that. Now, the switch has to be in series with the lights. Otherwise, it wouldn't come on. Okay, so the switch is in series with this. But if I take one bulb out of this one, the rest of them don't go out. So we'll talk about that type of circuit later. Let's do example one. If y'all are okay with it, let's talk about example one. Now this is a, a circuit just like the one I've got here. Okay, I'm going to take away your 50 volts. That was just made up. Okay, we won't show the current, though it's there. We won't show the effective resistance because it's there. We'll take out all my scratch there and there. 
Okay. We'll take out I, all the currents. We'll take out all the these. I will take out just about everything. I'll come and put back in what we're going to put back in. Okay. We'll need those later, but we'll reintroduce them as we get there. Probably should have just drawn it over again <laughs> rather than all this. Okay. So there's our circuit. They tell us, get my pen back. They tell us that R1 is a 7.00 ohm resistor. They tell us that R2 is a 9.00 ohm resistor. Sorry. Please come back. There we go. Okay. And R3 is a 21 ohm resistor. All three significant digits. Okay. All example one says is find the total resistance in the circuit. That's all. We don't know current. We don't know voltage. We don't know anything else. It's just asking what's the total resistance of the circuit. You know what that is? Add them together. It's R1 plus R2 plus R3. Now this is because it's a series circuit. You just add them. And those add to be 7.00 ohms plus 9.00 ohms plus 21.0 ohms. Okay? And when you add those, you get 9 and 7 are 16 and 21, 30. 7. Is that right? Yeah. 9 and 21 are 30 and 7. 37.0 ohms. That's all. All there is to it. In a series circuit, just add the resistors. Okay? Does that make sense? Are there questions or doubts? Just like the, you just crammed them all together and made them one 37 ohm resistor. That's all you're doing there. I mean, same current goes through it. So it's just like a single 37 ohm resistor. Okay. Now, that was that one. I think I'm just going to erase everything and do example two. Okay. Y'all need this up a little longer? Any questions on it? Okay, let's do example two. No questions. I'm getting no feedback here, folks. I don't know. This time, they show a voltage source here, E. And they tell us this is a 90-volt voltage source. Not very realistic. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a 90-volt battery. Okay, I don't think I've seen anything close to a 90 volt battery. Okay, this is sort of a made up problem here. Okay, it's going up here, and they do show here your current here. That's how we normally show it. And it's going through an R1, another R2, another R3, and on the way home is going through another R4. Now, just because these are listed in different places, they're still in a series. The same current runs through them all. The same wire connects them all. The current is constant. You don't have to worry. Yes? Huh? It's 90 volts. 90 volt total all the way around there. Okay? You're going to drop a voltage here, drop some more here, drop some more here, and drop some more. The amount you drop is equal to the 90 that you supplied here. Okay? Now, they tell you the values. 5 ohm for the first one. 
How many zeros? Two zeros. 5.00 ohms for the first one. 13.0 ohms for the second one. 12.0 ohms for the third one. And 96.0 ohms for the fourth one. A big old resistor there at the end. Okay? The question is, what is the current? What current will that battery supply to those resistors? How do you reckon you do this? Someone give me a guess. Well, the current is um, voltage divided by resistance. Yep. So the voltage is Uh-huh. Add up those. Find the total or the effective resistance of the circuit. And we'll just call that R like they do. And that's R1. Because this is a series circuit, you can add them. R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4, which is just, I'm going to write them out. You can probably just add them on your calculator. 5.00 ohms plus 13.0 ohms plus 12.0 ohms plus 96. Just to be lazy, I won't write that again, okay? Now, 96 plus 5 is 101 plus 15 would be 116, 116 ohms. That's the effective or the total resistance of that entire circuit. Is that what y'all got? I'm doing it in my head. 126? Okay, I'm, I blew it. 96 and, oh, 96 and 5 is 111, plus 25 is 126. You're right. 126 ohms, total resistance in the circuit. Okay? And then, as you said, what is current? E divided by the total resistance in a series circuit. And that would be 90.0 volts divided by 126 ohms. Notice I didn't put a point zero after that because that's my three significant digits right there. Okay? Anyone got the calculator to do the math? Wait, say it again? 0. 0.714. Okay. And that would be amps. Perfect. I thought you said 7.14. I said, no, no, that can't be. No. 0. 0.714. Perfect. Now, there's another way we could express that, not to make it any more confusing, but if you don't like the decimal number, move it three places and call that 714 milliamps. Just the reverse of what we did before. If you don't like a decimal, just move the decimal three places and make it milliamps because you're going to a smaller unit, so you'll need a bigger number, three decimal places. I think they'll leave it just like they had it. Oh, my. Oh, okay. I was looking at the wrong. Yeah, 0.714 amps. That's how they did it. Any question? See how they do it? Okay. All right. This time we're doing example three. And that's very different from example two, so I think I'll erase it and do it here. Here we have another battery, okay? And we have another current, okay? Oh, and this time they tell us what I is. I is equal to 3.00 amps, okay? And your current... I mean, your voltage, E, is equal to 115 volts. Now, let me tell you what I think that is. Okay? I'll tell you in a minute. There's a resistor. There's a resistor. And there's a resistor. Okay. This will be R1. Is 23 ohms. R2 is 14.0 ohms, and R3 is sitting down here, and we don't know what it is. Okay, 
I take it that's what we have to find. Find the value of R3 in this circuit. Okay. Now, there's a couple ways you can do it. I'm going to try to do it what I think is the easiest way. Though, there's several ways you could go. All right. First, tell me what you know already. I only see one current listed there. Do I need more? No. In a, in a series circuit, same current goes through everything. Same current goes through R1. Same current goes through R2. Same current goes through R2, 3, even though we don't know what it is. Okay? Now. Go ahead. Okay, we yes. ultimately are going to do that, yeah. So then you would you know the voltage, right? You know the current, so you divide that, you get that answer, and then you add up those two resistors, okay, and subtract it from. Okay, is that kind of the way you do it? Kind of, but you're going from the wrong one, okay. not resistance, but voltage. You know the total voltage here is 115 volts. I forgot to put my units in. Okay. You can figure the voltage. Remember the voltage drop across here? My green. I like to call it a delta V. This one just calls it V. It's a voltage drop. Change of voltage as you're going through there. So that's what I'm going to solve for. And I'll do for the one here because I know what this is. Delta V2. This is delta V1. And these will subtract from... Remember, they are subtracted. Subtract from E, and then we'll know what voltage is left. That will be the one that then use the formula you're talking about to get the uh, R3. Does that make sense? Okay. So what's the voltage drop across R1? Okay. The V delta V1 or V1, they like to call it. I like to call it delta V1. And that's what? 23, 23 ohms. How do you get a voltage drop? Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. But, okay, don't worry about the minus yet. We'll take care of that in a minute. How do you get a voltage out of current and resistance? Ah, so we multiply that by 3.00 amps. Okay, that's going to give you volts. How much? That's 69, isn't it? Twenty-three times three. Believe so. Okay. How about R2 down here? We're looking for a delta V2, and that would be what? 14.0 ohms times our 3.00 amps, and that's going to be 42.0 volts. Okay. Subtract it from your 115. So these two added together give you 111, I believe, isn't it? Volts. Subtract that from 115. I mean, what? Subtract one one one. Wow, what are you left with? Four volts across uh, R three. Well, now you figure what R three is, and you said it earlier. What's that? Four volts over same three amps. This is coming out a strange number. Did I do it right? Yes, I think so. That is approximately equal to 1.3. Now, they round it just to two digits. Is there some reason for that? Everything had three significant digits. I think it's because of the subtraction there. Uh, but I can't really see how they justified that. I would say 1.33 ohms. They just say 1.3 ohms. Okay? 
Now, they do it slightly differently. Actually, no, they do it very similarly. Well, let me see. Oh, I see. What they did was figure out the total resistance of the system uh, without knowing what R3 is. That would be one or 69 plus 111 plus R3, okay, and divide one fifteen divided by I three, and you could do that. It won't come out a very even number, and uh, they do some round off, and that's where they lost their digit, okay. The 115 divided by uh, 3 would be the total resistors, and they have they take that that's where they round it off. Okay, 38.3. Then they subtracted the 23 from it. Where did they get 23? Oh, the ohms. Yeah, 23. Then subtract the 14, and then whatever they have left is R3. So that's how they do it. Lots of ways to get there, okay? Lots of roads lead to Rome, right? So you can take any path you want as long as you do all the steps correctly. We got the same answer they did, I thought with a little more precision than they did, uh, but that's the, uh, they got 1.3 amps, I mean ohms, we got 1.3 ohms. Does that make sense? Either way works, okay? I found our way just to be just about easier than theirs, but maybe not. Okay. Now, the second part of that problem, same problem, says find the voltage drop across R3. Hey, we already did, didn't we? Four volts. Okay. Unfortunately, the way they did it, they got 3.9 volts. See, they introduced some error by rounding differently from what we did. If you did it the way we did, it's four on the nose. Do it the way they did, and you got 3.9. So I like our way better. Okay? But if you're anywhere close, you know, within a decimal, you know, something like that, you're not, no sweat. So either way you do it, you should come out close. And if you are close, you get credit. Okay? Any questions on that? So here's a summary. So is yes. Right. They add add them together. That's what this uh, summary table seventeen point one summarizes the characteristics of a series circuit. In a series circuit, the currents are all the same. Every current is the same because the same charges have to flow through everything. You don't gain or lose any charges. Those same charges are there, so the current's the same. But your effective equivalent resistance is the sum of all those individual resistors. It's just like you take all those resistors and just cram them together and make one big resistor. Add them together. The voltage, the voltage you supply is equal to the voltages that drop as they go around. So therefore, those if you just count all those voltage drops as positive, then the voltage in is the voltage out. You know. So that's why they add like that. So yes, that's the, the bottom line for a series circuit. Currents are the same. Voltage drops add to be the total voltage that you have supplied, and the uh, equivalent resistance is the sum of all the resistors.
That leads, that finishes 17.7. There are problems set at the end. There are, wow, it looks like a lot, but really it's not too bad. 1 through, any of the odds, 1 through 13. Lots of diagrams there, but they're all series circuits. So don't sweat them. They're just looking for different things. All right. Now, next we're going to hit what we call parallel circuits. This is what we live with most of our time. Okay? Here you have your voltage, your power supply, voltage source. Let me get my pen back just in case I need it. I may not, but just in case I might. Just in case I might. Okay. These are called parallel circuits. And I guess the reason is when you draw them like this, they look parallel to each other. Okay. Here's your battery or your voltage supply. Oh, and like I meant to say this earlier. We had that last problem with 115 volts. Even though they drew it like it was a battery with the cells, if you got 115 volts, that's coming out of the wall, okay? Usually that's 112, 115, you know, 120, any of those numbers, that's what you get out of the wall. That's not a battery, that's alternating current, not direct current. We're not worrying about that now. The same Ohm's law works for both of them. Okay, so don't sweat that at all. But when you see 150 volts, that's coming out of the alternator. That's coming out of a wall. That's not coming from a battery. That would be one huge, dangerous battery because it would have so much potential difference across it. Okay. So here's your power supply, your battery, EMF, whatever you want to call it. That's supplying the charges with the energy. Okay. If you're on a switch here, it doesn't matter whether you got the switch or not. That's okay. That doesn't change anything. Okay, here we have a resistor here that's in parallel with the resistor here that's in parallel with the resistor there. Now, think about what's happening here, folks. you got current leaving the battery. I'm going to close the switch so it will be current. Current is coming out of here. We're going to call this I. But when it gets here... Some of the current goes through here. That's just going to be I1 because other current keeps going this way. So you see your current has a split here. You can't supply the same current to both of those because that's a junction. Some current goes this way, some current goes that way. The charges have to be split there. Okay? Current does not change. No, no. The, the current here... Some of it goes through this one, some more goes through this one, some more goes through this one. So we call this I2 and this I3. These are not necessarily the same, they're not the same current as I, yes? Well, I was just wondering, based on my question, would it be back up and these to make back the same? Okay. The same? Then they, yeah, they all go through here, and this I3 is still I3. The resistor doesn't use any current. It uses the energy from the current, a voltage drop. I2, that's still coming through here. So I3 and I2 add to the same current as this was here because this split off here. They add back here. And by the time, get out of there. By the time they add here, you're back to your original I because I1 comes in here. And then they all come back out to your original I. So in a parallel circuit, the currents add. Now, here's the other kicker. What you're measuring here is a voltage. If you had a voltmeter and put across there, that would be the current of your battery here, right? That would be, I mean, the voltage of the battery. If you had a voltmeter across there, that's what you get. If you do it across here, you get the same volts because it's going between the same battery. You go here, you get the same volts. The same voltage is across each of those current uh, resistors. Remember, in the series circuit, you had a different voltage drop for each one. Here, you have different currents for each one, same voltage drop. Okay? Same voltage drop across each resistor. Okay? Okay. 
so that when you turn on your light switch, your or turn off your light switch, your refrigerator doesn't go out. Okay, because you see, I can. They only show one switch here that would shut down the whole current circuit. But if you had a switch right here, okay, then you could turn open this. These are still running, and this is still running. This is only operated on that switch. Okay, if you had a switch here, or say your capacitor or something, your compressor went off, you shut down the refrigerator, it doesn't shut down your TV, okay? It, everything is independent of the others. So what, what happens when you have to flip your breaker box? Okay. What's it turned there? Okay. What's happened there is, and, and you're foreshadowing exactly what <laughs> you know, the, the situation is here, uh, Every time you add another resistor here, the same voltage is across here, but you add in another resistor, that requires more current. Okay? Well, guess what? Your breaker is set up for 15 amps, 30 amps, you know, 20 amps, what, that, what not, you know. If you keep adding resistors to this, you're taking, making the voltage supply more and more current, and at some point, it exceeds what the breaker is allowing, so it flips off. You put too much current in that system, okay? So there could be a couple of causes for that. One is one of those things could have what they call shorted out. So your resistance is taken out, and you have a, a path to ground, and all your current is going there. That would be a dangerous situation. That's why the breaker goes. Because too much current suddenly goes through there, click it off. Okay. We had an outdoor plug in our the front of our house that you could plug the Christmas lights and things like that to. It was right under where the downspouts from the roof, especially if too much if the rain overfilled the gutters, then it overflowed there. And then it would hit there, and it would periodic, periodically shut off, okay? Just about every heavy rain, it would shut off. Now, we don't use it all the time, so we never knew until we went to use it, and it wasn't on, so we have to go down. Oh, yep, we have to flick it again. If it wasn't raining, no problem. That's why, because that the water shorted out the circuit and too much current went through. Our carpenter friend put a flange over it, sort of a little housetop on it, it's behind shrubs, so you don't notice that. It hasn't shut out since he did that because the water can't get to it now. But that's the advantage of those. If too much current goes through there, it breaks. And that's exactly what happens with a series circuit. You keep, I mean, a parallel circuit. You keep adding things in parallel, and soon it kicks off. The first house my wife and I lived in when we got married and, and moved to Birmingham, she had lived in Atlanta, I lived in uh, finishing my program in, in Lincoln, Nebraska, and she came to Birmingham to start work. And you know, so uh, the first house we lived in, grand old looking house, but it was a leaky old house, and they had renovated the kitchen, added more circuit to the kitchen, or so it appeared. The other rooms like the bedroom, the living room, the dining room, all the three bedrooms, all of them, bathroom, single outlet in each one, okay? Of course, we had to run drop cords all over the place to run the, the uh, other stuff, okay? Our clock radios, you know, anything else you wanted on, a TV, whatever, okay? Well, the kitchen had all these switches, I mean, uh, plugs all over it, so you could plug in lots of things. All they did was put them all in the same original one circuit that was there. So we found out that when you were, say, running the toaster in the morning, okay, uh, and at that time the refrigerator compressor kicked in, the toaster was pulling too much current, and it didn't have circuit breakers. They had the old fuses, the fuse blew. 
we kept Big B in business. That's how long ago it was. Y'all don't remember Big B, do you? It was the drugs. You do remember Big B? Huh? It was the drugstore. A uh, long time ago, that was about the main drugstore in town. There were others. It was the Bruno's family. Everything was Bruno's family. Bruno's, well, never mind. We won't get into all that. But anyway, Big B was a drugstore change, chain. I kept them in business by buying fuses. Because if you were running the microwave and turned on the toaster oven, then the microwave would be going, you know, because it was all just drawing on that one circuit. Without a circuit breaker, but fuses, the fuse would blow. Put another one in there. You don't want to put too big a fuse in there so it could hold no more, then you get a fire. You don't want that. That's the advantage of a circuit breaker. It keeps those circuits from, from adding up too much current. That's exactly what's going on with that. Okay? So let me erase my ugly drawing here. All right. But that's is what's happening in a parallel circuit. So your I, which I had drawn in here, I, I1, I2, I3, your total current leaves the battery that comes back to the battery. That's the same I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. And they just list plus dot, dot, dot. They only show three here, but if you had more, it would be more. Okay. So the individual currents going through there have to be split. You can see the wires. Some goes this way, some goes that way, some goes that way. Yeah, they add up. They have to. It's a little more obvious maybe if you draw that same circuit here. That would work too. Um, the voltage from here to here is the same as the voltage across the battery. That doesn't change. So the voltage across every resistor is the same as the voltage across the battery. <laughs> that doesn't change. The current, though, some current goes this way, some current goes that way, and some current goes that way. We call that I1, I2, and I3. So it's obvious these three pieces of current, they add up to be your I that leaves the battery and comes back to the battery, I. Okay? Those three add to that. Okay. Now, there's next green box here says... The voltage, uh, I'm going to do it the way they say it. E is equal to V1, where this is the voltage drop across resistor 1. This is V1, this is V2, and this is V3. Those are all equal. Because it's the same battery across each of those. So the voltage supplied is voltage drop, okay? That's pretty interesting, okay? Now, because of that, let's deal with those currents. This current in I1 is the voltage divided by R1. V divided by R1, right? And that's added to that same V divided by R2 plus that same V divided by R3 and so on and so on and so on. Okay? Well, if you look at that and you say, but I know that oh, and this is the total voltage here is E divided by uh, the current is E divided by R effective, the effective resistance, okay? Before, in a series circuit, you added those together. Now, this is sort of hard to see here. Now, I probably sort of muddied it up a little bit, but here's what you come out with. 1 over R, R that's your effective resistance, I called it RE, but let's just leave it R. It's equal 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over 
R3 plus dot, dot, dot. Okay? Very different from a series circuit. You don't add the resistances. You add the reciprocal of the resistances to get your effective, the reciprocal of your effective resistance. Okay? Uh, well, like right here. All those V's are the same, so you can divide them out, and this is what you get. Okay? Now, if that's not strange enough to look at, at and that's exactly why I was writing it in like this, because remember that E is the same as V1, V2, V3, so all these are the same voltages. So factor that out, and you get 1 over Re is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over R, as many as you've got. Okay. Think of this as each of those currents being added. Now this is the strangest part about parallel circuits. Give me a number for R1. Just make up a number. We're going to go with 3 three resistors here, so make up a number for R1. 12 ohms. Make up one for R2. I want to use six. Is that okay? Okay. And make up one for R3. Let's use four. Okay. <laughs> I say you can make them up, but here's why. I want them so they're going to be in the denominator, so I want the denominator so I can handle them easily. Okay? Five would be hard to handle. You'd have to multiply by so much. So let's see what happens. If you had 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 4. Okay? Well, you need a least common denominator, right? Yeah, all right. That's fun math. We like it, right? 12, 12 is the least common denominator, so that would be 1 twelfth plus... 2 twelfths, that's 1 6, right? Plus 3 twelfths is 1 fourth, right? That's what, oops, <laughs> yuck, duh. I was going so well until I wrote a 4 for a 2, okay. Isn't that the, true? Okay, let's add those together, and what do you get? 6 twelfths, which is 1 half. So your effective resistance is 2 ohms because it's 1 over r and it's 1 over 2 so guess what this is so strange but it's true okay. when you have a parallel circuit and you put more and more resistors there the effective resistance is less than any one of the individual resistors 12 4 and 6 6 and 4 whatever that is your those are big resistors. Your effective resistance is less than one. So the more resistors you put on there, the more load you put there, having to supply more current, so your effective resistance is going down, down, down. Because the voltage is the same, so applying more and more current to go through all those, so your effective resistance is actually less than any, the least of your individual resistors. Totally bizarre. Strange but true. That's exactly what happens in the parallel circuit. And that's why you have circuit breakers. Because your effective resistance is going down, meaning your current is going up. You put too many out there, you exceed the load of that circuit breaker, pop, goes the reading. Okay? Now, fortunately, with circuit breakers, you, once you take out whatever the, the uh, causative element there, Okay, like let the rain stop so that you don't have a short anymore. You can flick it and it goes back on. But in time, even circuit breakers go down. So I, we've had a couple in our house that, you know, we can't figure out what's wrong. Well, the circuit breaker's bad, put a new one in and everything will stop. So we've got our garage in that situation right now. We have one circuit we cannot get to work, and I think the circuit breaker. Because when they do break, they break open, so you don't have it close. Rather bizarre with parallel circuitry, that's exactly true. Your effective resistance follows a reciprocal relationship. And when you do that, the 
effective resistance is less than the least of those, okay? Which is really bizarre. The effective resistance is less. In a series circuit, you add them. It's always greater. In a parallel circuit, you add the reciprocals, and it's always less. Okay. Now, um, I probably did more than they intended me there. Let's go. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the very next thing. Um, almost. They do do something first that I don't know if you find it helpful or not. I have a feeling it won't be, but let's clear the screen and let's do it. We're going to pretend we only have two resistors, okay? Any two, you know, just two resistors, okay? Now let's use our formula 1 over R, effective resistance is equal 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now we don't know what they are. I, I had you do numbers that were going to give us nice denominators. There was a reason for that. I didn't want to make it too messy. This one, we don't know what they are. So what's the least common denominator between R1 and R2 if you don't know what they are? You, you multiply them together. It is a common denominator. It may not be least. So you put them over a common denominator, which is R1 times R2. Well, to get this one to be that, you have to multiply numerator and denominator by R2. To get this to be that denominator, you multiply by R1, so this would be by R1. Well, then put those together, and you get R1 plus R2 divided by R1 times R2. That's 1 over R. Good deal. Thank you. Okay. Because that's 1 over R, then R would be, if you reciprocate that, reciprocate this, R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. Now, uh, And I don't know exactly why they did that, uh, but let's think about it for a moment. Your effective resistance is a product of two resistors divided by the sum of two resistors. So if we tick the ones that we did before, or just two of those, we'll use your five now, if that's okay. You want to use 12 and 5? What were those first two numbers y'all said? How went to six out of the five? So let's do that. Twelve and five. Twelve times five is sixty, and twelve plus five is seventeen. So do sixty divided by seventeen. Second. 3.53. So let's say three and a half, okay? Three and a half. Three and a half is less than 12. It's less than 5. It's less than either one of those. Always would be the case. So your effective resistance is always less than either one of your constituents. Whether it was 3, 5, 7. In fact, the more you have there, the more it's less than all the others. The last one came out 2 when the others were... 12, 6, and 4, okay? So it was half of your, your least one, okay? Six of the others, so it's just really bizarre. That's what happens with uh, parallel circuits, okay? So here's what we're, okay. Now, here's how they're showing this. Remember the water model that we had before? Now we're going to have it with a... Uh, uh, resistance in pipes. Okay, so here's your pump. That's like your battery, your EMF, your voltage source. Okay, and your current is this total flow that's leaving the pump and coming back. 
You're not using up the water. The water is still the water. Okay? What you're using here in your resistors are the energy from the water. The, the total amount of water keeps going through. Okay? So this could be a fan down here and a fan here and a fan there. You know, there may be different resistors in the fan, but you're using the energy of the water. You're not using the water itself. Okay? Well, some of this water, flow of water, flow of current, current, water current, okay? Part of this goes through resistor one, part goes through resistor two, and part goes through resistor three. That's just like your current in a battery. That's the current of water, right? Okay? Now, um, the same water that goes in A comes out B. Some of it went here, some here, some here, but it all comes out here and that water turns back up there, okay? So, um, don't see how to, okay. Let's just pretend we shut off these two now, and we only had water going through this resistor here, okay? Say the pipe is smaller and that kind of stuff. No problem with all three there. When you do that, you have more resistance here than you did here because here you have more paths that the water can take. So there's less overall resistance for the water to flow. Does that sort of make sense? Sort of like you got a bigger pipe down here. Or the other way to look at this is it's a big pipe here and these are all three smaller pipes here. But the total volume here is the same as the total volume there, so the water just goes through nicely. But if you shut down these two, now the total volume going through here is a smaller pipe. It needs more resistance than it did when you had all three of them. Does it, does it go faster when it gets smaller or slower? Uh, like if you shut those two Okay, up. it would have to go faster because the resistance goes up. But you see, it goes, it goes faster because the same volume of water is going here. Now this is where the, the model sort of breaks down a little bit. If that volume of water is going here, it has to go through here faster because that's a smaller hole. So to get the same volume of water through, it has to go faster, but then when you get back here, it slows down again. It's kind of like, uh, have you ever done white water rafting? That kind of stuff you have, okay? And it's a big, slow-moving stream here, but then it narrows down here. The water rushes through there, and then when it opens up again, it's nice and slow again. Same principle. Greater resistance here. Now, electrical circuits, I'm not sure speed really changes. It's, this is, but it's, it's the same kind of concept with energy, okay? So... As in everything, the uh, all models do break down at some point. All parables, you know, you don't you don't use them completely the same way. Okay, that sets up the uh, yeah. And that's exactly what they meant there. A big pipe leaving and going to the pump, smaller pipes down there, so more resistance. But if those smaller pipes, each one is smaller, but the total area is actually greater than the big one, you have less resistance than you would if you had even one smaller pipe there. So same type of a deal there. Okay. And then this is the electrical analog to that. Same current going in, have to split the currents. I already showed this to you. They're showing it to you for the first time here. Okay. Let's do example one. Let me see. That's later. So let's go back to This slide. 
All right, example one. Find the equivalent resistance of the circuit shown in figure 1743. Okay, here you have it. Oh, let me get my pen back. All right. Here's your battery. Okay. They don't tell you anything about the battery. Okay. And it's going through one resistor here. And this is R1. And that's 7.00 ohms. I can tell this is not going to be as nice of an example as I gave you. Okay. And there's R2. R2 is going to be 9.00 ohms. And then you get to R3. My drawing gets worse and worse as the time goes on. I'm going to put it on the outside. R3 is 12.0 ohms. All they're asking for is effective resistance. Okay? So what is your R? I like to call it RE. They just call it R. Okay, let's not write it, <laughs> this is what we're asking for, but there's not a clean, nice formula for that. What would be the formula for effective resistance of a parallel circuit? It's not R, it's 1 over R is equal to what? Say again. 1 over R sub 1 plus 1 over R sub 2 plus 1 over R sub 3. Okay? And that would be 1 over 7. Now, you don't have to put the 0, 0. I'm going to do it just because they did. Plus 1 over 9.00 0, 0, plus 1 over 12.0 ohms. Now, do all of you have your calculators handy? Sorry, two people have already left because they would probably like to see this technique. But maybe they'll listen to this at home and get it. Do you see on your calculator a button that says 1 over R, I mean 1, and 2, 1 over X, or X to the minus 1, or something like that? You found that, okay? That's your reciprocal button. And here is the beauty of that button. Does everybody find it? Anyone who can't find it on your calculator? X to the negative 1 or 1 over X. Either one of those. Do all of you find that button? When you just got it? Okay, you got it? Okay. Here's what you do. Oh, it's so nice. 7, hit that button. Plus 9, hit that button. Plus 12, hit that button, equal, hit that button again, and that gives you R. Did you do it? Is that the same? That's 2.96. Say again? That's 2.96. 2.96. Let's see. That would be, R would be 2.96 ohms. Now, one thing I'm going to do, I'll look at these three and say, yep, all those are greater. I can believe this. I don't know for sure if it's, my writing stinks there. Wow. Okay. Let me see if I can clean that up just a little bit. I can't get my eraser to come on. There it is. Okay. Okay. 2.9. It's still ugly, but it's livable. Ugly. Okay. 2.96 ohms. Okay. Did everybody else get that one too? That's it. Isn't that an easy way to do it? You don't have to do least common denominators or anything else. Use those calculators and let them do it for you. So basically, anytime you have a 1 over, that's that reciprocal button. Let's hit it again. I'm going to just review it. Reciprocal of 7 plus the reciprocal of 9 plus the reciprocal of 12 gives you 1 over R, so hit the reciprocal of the answer, and that gives you R. Flips it back over. Isn't that a nice button to have? Okay. So. It's easier to do series. 7 plus 9 plus 12. You can do that in your head. But you can't do reciprocals in your head. So uh, 
there it is. And they got 2.962, good for them, okay? And they do show you this on the top of page 475. I wish they had this on the slide. That's exactly what I said. 7x to the minus 1 plus 9x to the minus 1 plus 12x to the minus 1 equal. And then what you got that answer, then do x to the minus 1 again. They say you have to hit another equal sign. I don't know. Did you? No. It just pops up there, doesn't it? Oh, you had to hit equal again. Okay. So, all right. So there's example one. Now it says find the total current. Oh, no, this is a different one. Sorry. So let's erase this one. I think we have time for this. Any questions for it? I'll just erase it. Sorry. Any questions before we go on to example two? Okay, find the total current in the circuit shown by figure 1744. Now, they're drawing this slightly differently. It's the same deal, though. Okay, here's your E. They call it E or V or whatever. 90 volts, which is a huge made-up voltage. I don't think anything. There must be something that uses that, but I don't know what it would be. Okay. This is the same as what we had before, just drawn differently. You got an R1 up here. You got an R2 down here. And you got an R3 right there. Okay? And that carries back to the battery. Okay? Your R1 up here is equal to 23.0 ohms. Your R2 is 14.0 ohms. Please give me a, a uh, calculator. I don't want to do this one on paper. R3 is equal to 5.00 ohms. Okay. And it says find the current. That's what we're looking for. That's the unknown. How would you think you would proceed? Current equals E divided by resistance. Okay. I is equal to E over R. Okay. I'll buy that. And then we know what E is. Right. 90 volts. So we need to find the resistance. So we would add up the reciprocal of all that. Yes. You would do exactly that to get your R. So 1 over R, remember it's 1 over R, not R. 1 over R is equal to what? 1 over 23. You don't have to put the plus point zeros if you want to. Plus 1 over 14, I can't write, plus 1 over 5. Don't bother with putting decimal zero zeros. They don't, don't change a thing on your calculator. You tell me what you get for R. Three point one eight sounds like a very reasonable resistance. Okay, so you take that and you put it here: ninety point zero volts over three point one eight. Ohms, and what do you get your current to be? 28.3. A little louder? 28.3. 28.3 amps. Okay. Now, they don't ask you to do this. But let's just imagine that was a series circuit with those same three uh, resistors in it. Then your effective resistance, this is in series now, would be 23 plus 14 plus 5. That would be 37 and 5 would be 42, right? 19 and 23 is 42 ohms. And you did 90 divided by 42. What would be your current there?
they didn't give you this problem. I'm just throwing it, throwing it out there. 2.14 amps. Look at how much more current parallel circuits calls draw than series circuits. No comparison. Okay. Wow. Okay. Just to show the difference there. They got 28.32. Forget this over here. I just did that on my own. Okay. Uh, that was example two. Don't think we're going to have time for example three, are we? Okay. Uh, so, we'll start with example three next time. Um, you can start working on some of the problems at the end of this section, or you can wait until we get there. Uh, we've got compound circuits to go, and then we're not going to do any more in this chapter. Uh, voltage uh, sources are sort of fun, and cells in parallel and series, but and electric power is especially fun, but none of that was listed in your course description for the courses being things they wanted you to do. So we'll end it after compound circuits. So if I can remember to, I'll try to have your next test ready that Wednesday after Thanksgiving. All right? So, uh, and then we've only got two chapters to go, but those two chapters are treated as one unit because when I went to the test bank, Neither chapter had more than just a few questions in them, so the only way I could get a decent test was to combine those two together. So we'll try to go through those pretty quickly. This is the last big chapter we've got, and uh, we'll go from there. Any questions? All right. One more assignment, though. Have a good Thanksgiving. Okay? I would say don't eat too much turkey, but... As long as you sleep it all off before next Wednesday, that'll be fine, okay? Eat as much as you want. Okay, good deal. Thank you so much. And, folks, I wish, I feel so bad I haven't returned a single paper to you, but the three guys who are hardly ever here, finally two of them turned in the first test, and I think the second test, too, the third one still hasn't turned in the first test. And he's the one that says, oh, I'm going to try, I'm going to try, yeah, yeah. And still, I don't know. So I know he's having to work full time, and it just, I don't know what's going to happen. But before the end of the term, you'll get all your tests back. As soon as he gets any in, then I'll be giving you yours back as soon as he turns one in. But the other two guys have only turned in two each, so. You could only get two back if he turned in everything right now. Okay. Uh, no, air, I think it is. How long will it take sound to propagate or travel through? Oh, wait. Yeah, no, that's through air at 25 degrees. Because I only found this at 25 when I put the nipple case underwater. Okay, let me. Where is my, my markers? Oh, there they are. No, they're not. There they are. Number okay. seven. I asked him that the last time. Yeah. Yeah. What chapter is this? Well, I thought I thought you asked about number nine. Instead of assuming that one was 10, 90 feet square. Yes, and then I think I asked about number seven. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is. Is, it, is this the matter chapter? Chapter sixteen. Yeah. Sixteen. Okay. No. Next one. I think he said yes. So it was air. Okay. So I'm happy to do that Okay. Let me show you what they're gunning for there. The sound, right? Okay. Well, where is it? Sound lights, here they go. It's this stuff. See, where's your question? Um, 
Well, I was looking at this 25 degrees Celsius, and you had water in the book as 25 okay, yeah. degrees Celsius. Okay, yeah. Okay. But what it is, this is the speed of sound in air at zero degrees, I'm pretty sure, and then this is how it increases as you go up. So this is the formula you use to get the velocity, and then from that you can get the time. It's a lot like this one. Okay? It's a combination of 1 and 2 here. You see, here the temperature is at 23 degrees, so you use it to get the speed at that thing, and then figure out the time. Okay. See what I'm saying? That's what it's asking about. And um, for number 9, it's the 1090 uh, feet squared, right? That's correct. Like you told her she yeah, yeah, yeah. Her. Okay, you're right. Uh, okay. Yeah, because you're using the different, yeah. Uh, what temperature did it say? Or it didn't? No, this isn't temperature. This is I know, but 7 miles per hour, okay. Yeah, they round this at 1090. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Will you be good, uh, copy? Yes, copy? yes. I did not trust them not to have it locked up. So I meant to say that earlier. I hope everybody got one. I'm so sorry. It took me so long to get those. Ah, there it is. Okay, and you understand these two corrections here. Okay, this, as I was just answering her, this is through air. So you have to adjust for the temperature first and then calculate the time. Okay, this one, they didn't give you the the frequency of the uh, whistle, that's what it is, 585 hertz. Okay. And then this one down here, they say, and see, in this one they said a frequency of, and then don't put it there, yeah, yeah. 5,000 hertz. Okay. okay? Uh, and you assume 1090 here, and you assume 1090 down here too. Okay. okay? Uh, it sounds a whistle, and they left off they didn't even say at a frequency of, they just left it off. So that's 585. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh -huh. Sorry that <laughs> two weeks and I still couldn't get it to you. Oh, that's fine. But now you've got two weeks to do it. Huh? Okay. Uh,